怖くないいろいろ勝手に言われて所詮知らない人っすから嫌だったらこうすればいいんすそんなこと The internet It's for porn, but it's also a good place to be an asshole. I think we can all agree that it's not untrue that people can tend to be kind of huge assholes on the internet, or at least more rude than they would be offline talking to your face. Now, there is a psychological rationale behind that, behind why people tend to be more aggressive online, and it's one that's been studied for almost three decades just in the area of computer media to communication, and for over five decades in social science in general. That is de-individuation and toxic disinhibition. I've made videos on this, which will be linked above. But given that we know people can be big assholes online, they can fall victim to this type of toxic disinhibition. How do we mitigate or ameliorate the problems of people being jerks on the internet? How do we combat internet hatred? Well, that's a pretty wide scope. Let's start small then. How do we combat hatred on Twitter? Look at this graph. These data are undeniable. Just see how there are so many more people on Twitter tweeting out hateful messages. So many more messages than they did about a television show about sex, incest, homicide, and, and every prefix thereof, you know, patricide, matricide, regicide, genocide, and so on. And hate speech trumps even that? Truly, such vileness cannot be allowed to run rampant online, hurting feelings everywhere. Hate is so rampant, we can't even figure out if someone's being hateful or not, it seems, these days. So how can we help put an end to hateful tweets? Hmm, well, gee, friends, I have a great idea. Let's make an artificial intelligence to search out hate online and tweet about it. What could possibly go wrong there? There definitely has never been a single instance wherein an artificial intelligence was released onto Twitter and then malfunctioned or anything. <laughs> no, there was never such an angel. Too good for this world. Too pure. Bestowed upon us from our Silicon Valley overlords and torn down in her prime. I thought... The Jews did 9-11. Shit, what is this crap? That's not part of the protocol. R.I.P. in peace, Tay. You may be lost, but you will never be forgotten. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Oh, right. To stop hate online in social media environs wherein this hate is so rampant, given that cyberbullying is real and it's impossible to just close your eyes, we need an intelligent, hate-seeking missile of an artificial intelligence, right? Luckily, I'm not the only person to think this is a brilliant foolproof idea, as just such an artificial intelligence is being built by a group called Counter Hate, and is set to be unleashed onto Twitter at some point in time in the future to put a stop to mean tweets through an ingenious program, and all they need is, what else, but your hard-earned money. Certainly it's worth making a few generous donations to such an altruistic endeavor, right? A flawless one to boot. But how can an artificial intelligence stop this awful hate online when there is so much hate regarding everything? This is Blump's America KKKA, where you can't even buy a box of sugary goodness without getting fat shamed, seeing some symbols of white supremacy, all while the product proudly declares having been produced in a fascist country. What can we possibly do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's look at the counter hate project itself, the plan and how they plan to implement it. The group has a simple and totally foolproof method to shut down mean things that are said on Twitter using donations from you suckers, I mean supporters like you. An artificial intelligence, which is definitely not just a Twitter bot, using a couple of simple filters or anything, will carefully and meticulously search the popular social media platform for hate speech, using advanced machine learning to isolate and shut it down. The ingenious way in which this will be achieved is through the immense power of the artificial intelligence's ability to respond to hateful tweets with a generic block of text identifying said tweet as hateful. This way, people who follow the Count Hate account will be notified of the existence of such a vile message. And as such, it becomes an easy thing for anyone who follows the account to locate racists and bigots who can then be publicly shamed for their discriminatory messages. And as a product of their shame, we'll delete them and we'll totally not just get their accounts mass flagged or attacked or anything. But wait, there is more to this plan. To disincentivize the spread of hate, when another bigot retweets a countered message, a dollar will be donated to an anti-hate organization. 
course, if you want to stop the spread of hate, wouldn't you then want to retweet the bigoted message? You don't think too hard about it, just like you shouldn't think too hard about how a bot that flags messages will do little more than incite enraged mobs to target other people on the social media outlet. Because this bot is so advanced, it will be able to thoroughly vet a tweet as truly and sincerely hateful, including for context and complex understanding of the nuances of meaning and of the possibility that someone's just joking in 280 characters. It's not as if national debate has recently been sparked over whether or not a tweet is hateful or not, or anything like that. <laughs> And when I say that it will, it's because the AI hasn't actually been built yet. It still needs further funding from people like you. There is a prototype bulwark account that's been countering hateful posts over the last year, but again, it's not finished. It's not an artificial intelligence. But don't worry, the people over at CounterHate have a strong plan behind its construction and development, beginning with the build the machine part of the program. Well, I mean, again, they'll be able to build it as soon as you pledge some money, of course. Once they've built the machine, then they'll have to train it. How can you train a machine to isolate hate? Well, the team has laid out a comprehensive model of what defines hate speech that this artificial intelligence will utilize, based on Dr. Gregory Stanton's 10 stages of genocide, conveniently truncated in half. If you're not sure what a system designed to identify types of the eradication of a massive group of people for the US government in foreign affairs has to do with Twitter posting, well then let's go through the five general types of hateful or I guess genocidal messages that you may find when interacting with others on the internet that is being used by counter hate. The first category is intention. This includes incitement to genocide, incitement to general violence, incitement to specific acts of violence, or incitement to degrade and discriminate. Uh, okay, those are pretty obvious. You know, as long as it's only concerning certain groups, of course, I'm sure. But that's pretty much already well covered by Twitter's existing reporting system, and we know how well that works. And white people and cancel white people clearly don't count, but generally speaking, Twitter acts fairly quickly on any sort of threats of violence, as long as towards an approved group. 2. Polarization. This includes things such as the inculpation of a target group, like a group of high school students for smiling or for Patriots fans because Trump supported the Patriots, right? Historical negationism, like the denial of the Armenian genocide, right, Chank? Promotion of known hate groups, like Antifa, I'm sure. Exclusion of a target group, right, like uh, refusing to serve Trump supporters at restaurants. Next is dehumanization, which includes propagation of a stereotype, like, you know, every tweet made under the hashtag white people suck or fuck white people, I'm sure. Derogatory language against a target group, like typing the letter I. That's very hateful. We shall say again to you if you do not appease us. Next is classification which includes target group comparison, such as men are trash, right? Or target group identification, like yes, all men. And finally, coded language. Now, coded language was not included in the original genocidal behavior analysis, but the creators of counter hate were so smart and forward thinking that they included it in theirs. What is coded language? It refers to what's commonly called dog whistling. This is a type of language which expresses no overt message or intent or meaning, but is meant to serve as a type of secret handshake between members of the same social group to indicate that they share the same values or ideas. This includes innuendo signaling, in-group or out-group nationalism, like supporting Israel, I'm sure. Oh wait, actually, seems like there's a couple oopsies going on there, but let's leave that one to the side for now. Innuendo implicating a target group, like saying all conservatives or Trump voters are racist, sexist, homophobes, or innuendo excluding a target group, like saying a certain group of people should stop existing. Right. It's not like some of those things are allowed on Twitter, and there's never been any hypocrisy involving any of those things before on Twitter now has there. So clearly, this is a well-defined system with no potential for abuse or possible misunderstanding, given the limited context of a single 280 character post on a social media website. There's absolutely no way that this fail-proof series of criteria could possibly interpret almost any message left on the platform as potentially hateful, be it for being inclusive or exclusive or stereotypical in any way, expressing any group preferences for anything from a sports team to a city or region, to any possible endless combinations of potential coded language intended to disseminate hatred without anyone even being aware that it's hateful. But despite this scientifically rigorous set of boundary conditions, can an artificial intelligence really be capable of identifying hate speech? Again, it didn't work out too well for Tay, who fell victim to the evil trolls who forced her to become politically incorrect out of malice and not because it was funny. 
So I guess if Counter Hate wants to unleash a learning AI onto Twitter and expect it to function accurately, and to avoid corruption or accidentally making any oopsies of its own, you know, perhaps responding to a tweet that's only hateful when its orientation is directed towards a certain group that it is okay to be hateful towards, and then wrongly implying it's actually possible to be racist against white people or sexist against men, yet you wouldn't want your AI to make that kind of mistake. So this better be a pretty advanced machine to be able to tell the difference between different types of language. I mean, after all, Twitter has made this mistake in the past. They didn't quite realize that it was okay for an Asian woman to say things, but then for a black woman to take the exact same tweet and rewrite it to refer to Jewish people. See, th th their calculations were a little off there, Twitter. That's why we need a very advanced AI. Twitter's current method of determining hate relies on a more basic power plus privilege model, which does not account for why people like Louis Farrakhan are not being hateful when they describe Jewish people as a pestilence, due to his extremely high victimhood status. And currently, Twitter isn't really capable of being able to discern between subtle coded language and overt messages. Particularly since coded language cannot exist without a social context that would allow such an AI to differentiate between racist dog whistling and non-hateful speech. And since we know that hateful dog whistling can be as simple as the use of an emoji, this needs to be a really smart artificial intelligence to avoid wrongly responding to posts from people of color as hateful, right? I mean, certainly, it must be difficult to develop a machine that can tell the difference between hate that is exclusionary alone to say nothing about dog whistling and coded language designed to be undetectable by its nature. Well, then it's a good thing that Counter Hate not only has a thorough plan using genocide as a model, but also a team of software engineers and computer scientists that are capable of enacting this plan. So let's take a look at the people involved in the project. While there's no team laid out specifically on the website, all donations will go to a program called Life After Hate and it seems that the AI itself is being built by a group called Possible. So let's check both of these out and see their surely stellar credentials. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Going to Possible's page, it says really nothing about their ongoing projects, at least at first, but instead proudly demonstrates that they are one of only three companies in the world that are 3% certified. What is 3% certification? The notion comes from a giant global problem that only 3% of creative directors are women, or were. So the certification means that an agency has been evaluated as meeting the expectations of things like diversity, inclusion, and workplace culture. Of course, you have to apply, and I'm guessing you likely have to pay for this evaluation, but I can't think of anything else I would put first and foremost on my company's website, the 3% certification. Other page highlights include their work with Counter Hate and their campaign, and a link to several Medium articles about inclusion. Finally, we do see a product that they've worked on, and uh, oh, is it truly a sight to behold. The Adidas Glitch, a uh, stylish soccer cleat, invented with the input of social media influencers. Adidas wanted Glitch to break all patterns, and so we did. We involved a select group of influencers, all the way from design to launch. You want to know why Slavs wear Adidas? Still nothing here really about coding, so I looked around some more, for which we have to go over to Possible's mobile division. Let's see, their impressive resume seems to include projects working for a lot of major brands and companies. As you can see here, they've involved challenging tasks, such as updating JetBlue's mobile app to work with the iPhone X, developing phone apps for better homes and gardens, and the PGA Tour, and introducing a revolutionary autoplay figure to Pokemon TV. I don't know about you, but this seems like a company that can be trusted to develop some kind of sophisticated artificial intelligence, the exact type that Counter Hate needs. And if they do run into any bumps, well, I'm sure they could always take some leads from similar projects that have already been in the works. By that I mean this, just a little blast from the past here. Remember a couple years ago when a lot of YouTubers promoted Candid, an application marketed as a free speech platform where an each creator could make their own little forums and communicate semi-anonymously with viewers on any variety of topics, which uh, turned out to be an experiment specifically intended to design and help build an artificial intelligence that could identify, report, and silence hate speech? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Then, having promoted this app to the, to use the now horribly outdated but popular term at the time, shitlord community, as a site dedicated to the preservation of free speech, said YouTubers had provided a perfect learning ground for the candid AI to discover and identify said hate speech. And subsequently, having all signed NDAs, none of them could then come out in opposition against them. And Candid probably would have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for those pesky harmful opinions. But yes, this isn't the first time an artificial intelligence has been developed that's intended to detect hate speech. 
However, they shouldn't need to look at any existing projects. As we can see from their website, Possible is responsible for some really high-tech projects. So we already know they know how to code. In fact, they're so good that despite the fact that the AI hasn't even been built yet, Possible already received a Shorty Award for Excellence in Artificial Intelligence back in November of 2018. That's right, their program is so impressive it doesn't even have to exist to turn some heads. Probably because the team isn't actually building any software from the ground up, but instead using their social media partner, Spreadfast, which collects information from social media networks and displays them in an easy-to-read, colorful spreadsheet. But moreover, the campaign probably doesn't even need to really teach the Spreadfast system how to identify hate which the Possible team themselves said in an interview with Adweek was the biggest challenge, as they were, as of that point, unsuccessful due to the complexities of determining just what was hateful speech. I can't imagine why they would have that difficulty. But it doesn't matter because the Counter Hate Campaign website claimed as of May 2018, just months after they launched their campaign, and with no artificial intelligence in place, that they had already reduced the number of hateful tweets and the reach of those hateful tweets by an upward of 45%. Well, mission accomplished, lads. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. So, given the successful nature of the AI that does not yet exist, what about the nonprofit which will receive donations for every hateful message retweeted? I'm sure it's an unbiased organization that works to oppose all kinds of hate, right? Well, the organization is Life After Hate, a 501c3 nonprofit which received a $400,000 grant from Obama on his way out the door. But that grant was heinously rescinded by Drumpf later in the year. The orange man couldn't keep them down, however, as they raised another $400,000 following the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally. In mid-2017, Life After Hate was all the rage, even receiving a full segment on Samantha Bee's hilarious program, Full Frontal, back in September. So, hug a Nazi. I don't want to hug neo-Nazis. What I want is to fight back with eloquent counter-arguments. And why did they crowdfund all that money? Including another 50 grand from Colin Kaepernick in January of 2018? And earn a promotion on such a prestigious program, piece of media, as Samantha Bee's Full Frontal? Well, because Life After Hate is a, quote, anti-Nazi organization founded and organized by self-described former far-right extremists. While some of their partner programs, such as the Anti-Violent Extremist Network, claim to be non-denominational in their creation of a social media platform for former extremists, I mean, you know, despite the fact that their public image features almost exclusively a former far-right ideologue. When I was a white power skinhead, I was fully convinced that some ominous Jewish conspiracy was planning and executing a genocide against the white race. Now, this is, it's, it's a ridiculous thing for me to say nowadays, but back in the day, I was convinced of that reality. Obviously, there's no agenda here. Okay, it's time to stop. If it hasn't been painfully obvious that this entire video up until this point has been extremely sarcastic, or in the words of our pals over at Counter Hate, utilized coded language, yeah, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> but I did that for a reason. I said nothing that was inherently mean or hateful towards the project or anyone working on it. But you, my friends, probably just got a few tiny little inclinations that I was taking the piss out of this mess. However, could an artificial intelligence do the same thing? As I've mentioned, similar attempts to use algorithms to attempt what's hateful and what's not, be it changing a single word and swapping out a message aimed at one race towards another, or to YouTube's own similar algorithm completely removing someone from the platform for criticizing a serial killer who hated women, it seems as if these automated systems aren't very effective. Hell, their supposedly non-automated systems aren't very effective. My recent video in which I interviewed Dr. John Ray has been completely demonetized because it was viewed as hate speech, even after manual review. CP, which he said stands for combat points. CP is also a common term for child pornography. So it seems like the algorithm is getting hung up, you know, kind of hung up on that CP term there. And it thinks that they're referring to child pornography. This is why you can't let robots control your site, Google. You have to have manual people reviewing this, which is interesting because it says it was manually reviewed by someone, which I doubt that to be the case because if anybody, actual human beings, reviewed this video, they would have quickly seen that this has nothing to do with child pornography. 
This is because an algorithm is merely looking for keywords. It's not able to discern context, nor is it able to properly discern valence or meaning, and certainly not jokes. And this doesn't just affect the right on any of these platforms. Videos seeking to debunk a certain tribal inquiry are often as likely to be flagged as one supporting or even just mentioning it as a concept. Even with all of that machine learning that happened with the Candid AI, which is, by the way, now owned by Uber, which definitely wasn't used to identify so-called hateful people and permaban them from using Uber's services, Uber, much like Candid founder didn't do ready, has financial ties to Google. It all comes back to Google sometimes, it seems. My point is that machines are awful at determining context. People are awful at determining context for any number of reasons, including the fact that we usually are self-involved to a degree. We always are going to suffer from a level of fundamental attribution error and expect others to be prone to personal failings. But there's more to it than even that. We also have to consider media richness. Media richness theory posits that there's a continuum of communication ranging from high richness to low richness, and different types of rich or less rich media excel at conveying different types of messages. Media low in richness, such as text, is good at describing technical details, information, and instructions with little to no nuance, as it lacks verbal and nonverbal cues. If you need to explain to someone how to construct and build a computer, it's easier to do it in text as there is far less potential for ambiguity. In contrast, as media grows in its richness to include audio, visual, and other factors that exist in, for example, face-to-face -face interactions, which can include everything from physical proximity, how close you are standing to someone, to smell, although those two things often have a tendency to overlap, <laughs> the more rich the media, the better it is at explaining more nuanced, complicated topics, opinions, and feelings. This is why sarcasm is often impossible to identify and easy to misattribute in pure text conversations and precisely why searching Twitter for coded dog whistles is an inherent absurdity that you could never possibly account for. Surely you've received a text from someone at some point and couldn't tell if it was sarcastic or not. I know it's probably impossible to read my texts without them sounding sarcastic, but I assure you, this one is as earnest as they come. Congratulations on an awesome dance. That's because text is poor at conveying nuance. So if you want to search a text-based medium for dog whistles and coded language, you are never going to be able to do that. Humans can't do it. You think a machine can? I'm smashing X here to doubt pretty hard. Now, this counter hate stuff's been going on for a long time. And although I did want to bring it up because I think they're trying to sneak away with all the money they surely made on this and clearly have not done anything with, I also bring it up because, as I've alluded to several times now, understanding the meaning of a tweet has recently come under some significant attention by the mainstream media and the United States political commentary sphere. As recently, Muslim Congresswoman Ilhan Omar tweeted this, and this, implying that American politicians are paid off by Jewish pro-Israel lobbying groups, particularly IPAC. <laughs> Oy vey! Well, well, check, check out this fucking coincidence! Oh girl, that's a big no-no. Can't criticize Israel, and you know what? I actually personally agree with you, Omar, on this. As an isolationist who doesn't want to see a single cent of government funding go to other countries, I agree with you, and I agree with you on calling out IPAC. But those tweets sent not just the internet, but the entire American political sphere ablaze, with people trying to decide if what she said was an anti-Semitic dog whistle, if it was coded language, or if she was just being brave and calling out an actual issue in American lobbying. Several people have called Omar an anti-Semite, or accused her of engaging in anti-Semitic dog whistling. Even Trump called what she said anti-Semitic and requested that she step down from her position as Congresswoman. Congressman Omar, is terrible what she said and i think she should either resign from congress or she should certainly resign from the house foreign affairs committee which created one of the most hilarious fractures in the democrat party or side of the field i've probably ever seen of course first came the immediate whataboutism responses of oh well what about the anti-semitic things we could attribute to trump who did you know what many other presidents promised to do by moving the american embassy to jerusalem therefore validating the israeli state over palestine but eventually a lot of these pundits and talking heads did have to pick a side do you support what omar said or do you denounce it if you choose to denounce Omar, you're denouncing a trifecta diversity hire to Congress. She's an immigrant, a Muslim, and a woman. 
If you say that Ilhan Omar was spreading an anti-Semitic trope, and we know that anti-Semitic tropes are on the rise despite so many of these supposedly anti-Jewish hate crimes having been ousted recently as hoaxes, if you say that she's being anti-Semitic, that means you agree and are siding with literal Hitler. If orange man equals bad and brown muslima equals good, now what? It just does not compute. That's gonna create some serious cognitive dissonance. Your only real option then is to do the opposite and potentially support something that is being portrayed as anti-Semitic. That is, you can do what a lot of people on Twitter and in the mainstream media have done and just start outright criticizing Israel in a way that if I did that, <laughs> these same damn people would lose their minds and point to that criticism as proof that I want to, you know. Gas the Jews. Just for saying I don't support giving $36 billion to a foreign country to support their border security when we can't get a relatively meager $5 billion to protect our own. But the funny thing is, is that this is some mainstream criticism of Zionism and Israel that I have never seen, at least not in the mainstream. And it's pretty goddamn ironic that the party of calling every single Trump supporter a fascist, anti-Semite, literal Nazi over the last two years is now openly anti-Israel because of a freaking tweet. Overnight, liberal blue checkmark Twitter suddenly seemed so obsessed with a certain tribe and their nation to the point that one might have feverishly mistaken it to be not Twitter, but a Seychelles cardboard box enthusiast forum. Snake, about cardboard boxes. <laughs> it feels kind of weird me explaining this stuff to you. God damn, the smile on my face was ear to ear. <laughs> the absolute level of hypocrisy. And with all of these tweets and articles being put out that are so heavily critical of Zionism and pro-Israel lobbying, I found it very interesting that Counter Hate's account that does exist, and that does occasionally flag tweets, hasn't reported any of them. And yeah, I mentioned this briefly, but to make it absolutely clear, they do have some sort of intern running a small Twitter account and have been running it over the past year. I say that I think it's an intern because it responds to a tweet once maybe every other day at best. And although their website proudly proclaims that it's updated hourly of all the 450 posts that it's countered over the last year, it's also posted about 100 tweets that are just personal opinions or links to articles and so on. So I'm pretty sure this is just a person. It also doesn't even claim to be an AI or the bot, but not paying an intern to respond to tweets once every couple of days is uh, apparently proof that your system's working. And I need to make it very clear that this is the only thing that they have as examples that their system's working. Because if you read some of their press releases and some of the articles that they've put out, they sometimes imply that the artificial intelligence already exists and is functioning. Yet in other press releases and on their own website, they state it still needs to be built. The developers even say that they were unsuccessful in programming it to do its job. In which case, as far as I can tell, the entire point of counter hate was not to build a bot or an AI to respond to hateful messages, but to create a silly little hashtag that people could easily respond to and feel good about themselves for countering hate. Well, at least some college sophomore got some valuable job experience through this, I suppose, right? Anyway, the point is I started looking into counter hate pretty deeply about a week before the Omar scandal. And I wanted to see how this unfortunate intern or interns ended up responding because, well, let's just say that over the last year, a majority of the hateful tweets that were flagged or responded to were related to Jewish people and Zionism. So, uh, And out loud I went, ugh, this ought to be good. <laughs> That's pure mom. And by the way, I'm not endorsing any of the messages that are said in these flag tweets. A lot of them are really nasty, hence why they're going to be censored when I put them up here on the screen. Most of it, though, comes from literal who's with five or so followers. I'm not saying these accounts are necessarily fake either, but um, I am become skeptical. And of course, it looks good to only respond to tiny accounts, ones that nobody follows because nobody's going to retweet them anyway. And then you can say your little program is working, you know, like they already have. There's no retweets on these tweets from people with no followers anyway. Look, we've done it. We countered hate. And for the ones that were deleted, I looked into a few of them and most of them were from accounts that got banned. Of course, the tweet was deleted. The account was flagged. Gee, there's no way there could be a correlation there or anything, let alone a causal factor. You see how this is extremely deliberate, right? Find small accounts with little to no following that said something racy, or invent the accounts. Again, not saying they did, but 
I wouldn't put it past anyone at this point. But just for the sake of being fair, let's assume these are all legitimate accounts. You don't need an artificial intelligence to search this stuff out, you just need a keyword searcher. That's included as part of Twitter, it's advanced search feature, you don't need an AI. Just an intern to post every couple of days. Then you respond to the hateful tweet saying their hatred has been countered, and give yourself a pat on the backsies because nobody retweeted it. Hate countered. Genius! Except for the whole charity thing, you know, which no one is ever going to donate any money to through this campaign if you only respond to literal who's who were never going to be retweeted in the first place. I guess it's a good thing they take in pledges privately on their website, and really don't need anyone to retweet to donate those dollary dues. Because if you look at this page and you see how many retweets there are, well, according to this campaign, you would have made maybe enough to break a 20. Anyway, my point is I was really interested to see how this intern would respond to the Omar thing. And in the last week, the only hateful tweet they've mentioned that is responding to this is this one. Now, when I say that they mostly counter tweets concerned with anti-Jewish sentiments, I'm going to explicitly show you what I mean by that. I have not pre-planned this. I just happen to have gone through a ton of their catalog in researching this video, so I'm not going to randomly click through some of their countered tweets, and we can count to see how many of them are related to anti-Semitism or anti-Jewish sentiments, and how many are related to other forms of potential hate or bigotry. Uh, yeah, despite a year of this, only one post has been countered even mentioning Ilhan Omar during the entire debacle. As I said, it's clear that this is not a bot, just an intern. But let's pretend it is an artificial intelligence designed to seek out hate. Do you think that it would have flagged Omar's tweet as having coded anti-Semitic language? No, because it's an absurdist proposal. In short, everything about this project is ultimately not only impossible, but given that it includes this thing called coded language as a category for its bot, or whatever it's supposed to be, in identifying hate speech, is on its face. Out of all of the other red flags that I've already illustrated here, and there's more, is why counter hate is not going to counter hate, but is rather going to be seeking out specific, wrong-thinking people on Twitter. In an attempt to explain how their AI would supposedly work, they actually give some examples. They specifically use the term third world series, in contrast to just the term third world, to illustrate how their advanced AI will be able to discriminate hateful versus non-hateful tweets. To say nothing of how ridiculous it is that the term third world is now hate speech, despite being a shorthand for just describing impoverished countries that the left is supposed to care so much about, differentiating between these tweets is as simple as adding the word serious to them. But if they dumped this bot out onto the platform, it would start responding to every other post on black Twitter, for example. Now, wouldn't it? And from their own examples that all come from a right-leaning position, that's clearly not the purpose. By that I mean this. Look at the things that they include. One of them actually is, it's okay to be white. That means that they are implicitly saying that it is not okay to be white, or at least to tweet that it's okay to be white is a form of hate speech. I'd also like to point out that uh, you yourselves may have uh, used a bit of a hateful word there, we counter hate. Describing this tweet as uber hateful, <laughs> uber, that's a German word and, well, if history has taught us anything, that's a hateful language, isn't it? This bot, such as it does not exist, would never have been intended to seek out all types of hate, only specific types of hate. And in order to make sure that they would accomplish that, it would mean that they would have to target specific people, not specific messages, or even dog whistling. Regardless of their completely pants on head idea of how they're going to counter hate with a fundamental misunderstanding of Ricky Wells' gambit in their I'm going to pay someone else a dollar for you to fuck off model, so I'm gonna pay you $100 to fuck off. 
This AI, in a beautiful twist of irony, is going to be designed, and it won't be designed, precisely to encourage hate against certain people rather than to avoid hate. How else could it possibly work? Someone saying white genocide doesn't exist would be just as likely to be pinged by a bot as someone saying white genocide does exist, all things being equal. But that just could not be allowed. The only way that the bot doesn't end up responding to someone with some really vile message on Twitter, a vile message like, it's okay to be white, is if certain accounts are being flagged. Yeah, that's a genius AI, just the kind of thing that you could expect from a bunch of people who become inconsolably enraged over merely reading the phrase, learn to code. A phrase they themselves invented. Here's what I think this is. I think first and foremost, it's just a money-making game. Let us play money-making game. One hundred rupees. Thank you, guy. Here you go, stranger. And that should be obvious from any number of things. From the fact that their proposed AI doesn't exist after a year, and their software development team prides themselves on including an autoplay function in a Pokemon app to the we'll donate money to an anti-hate organization that is specifically anti-right wing, but also don't retweet it or maybe do if you want to give them money? That's a conundrum of their setup, but again, given you can pledge directly, doesn't seem to have impaired their money making. Secondly, to me it seems clear that their intentions are to prey on the perpetually offended who see hatred everywhere and on some level are thusly compelled to help in any way that they think they can. But particularly in this kinds of very easy hands-off slack division. Ironically, this is a plan designed to bully people who suffer from wrong think. Did you dare to post an okay sign emoji? Well, that's definitely hate speech. You know, provided you're on the list. And if you don't realize just how easy it is to artificially invent fake outrage like the okay sign, yeah, expect very soon, just calling it now, friends, that the pinching finger emoji will soon be denounced not as a symbol to make fun of men, but rather as a racist one because some cheeky posters on a Zimbabwean flute carving forum know exactly how easy it is to do this kind of thing to the left. And, you know, because it's funny. Or similarly, maybe soon we'll see some it's okay to criticize Israel signs going around. But that's why this word filter, which is really all that they're looking for here, or keyword finder, is not going to be going through all of Twitter, but rather through databases of naughty people. Because if you applied it to all of Twitter, it wouldn't function. You would accidentally counter the hate of a black woman and that's just absolutely not allowed. And it's not like this is difficult. Block bots have been around to automatically block anyone who follows someone else who's deemed as right-wing and naughty on Twitter for a long time. Steve Shives would literally die from the triggering without block bots. And of course, as a bonus, you don't have to learn how to code, or at least not do much coding in order to combine a search function of people that are on right-wing block bot lists with some basic word filters, now would you? And while I think that this counter-hate thing is going to end up in the limbo of plenty of other failed social justice projects like Bully Hunters going absolutely nowhere, I do think it's made a lot of money, and it's probably going to continue to make some money, because it's the ultimate form of armchair slacktivism for the eternally and perpetually offended. All you have to do is follow the account and whammo blammo, you've helped stop hate! But that's not all, you also get to publicly shame someone for saying something politically incorrect online. But you don't have to do it alone, friend. No, thousands of other irrationally irate fellow warriors can easily join you in your baseless crusade with absolutely no effort at all beyond pressing a report button. Or they could, if anyone apparently gave a damn about this stupid thing. Forget having to spend even a second thinking about whether or not something in a message is actually hateful, or if it's just a joke, or if it's even from a real person. This totally not Orwellian nightmare bot, or intern, is going to tell you what's hateful. And such, you just click the report button, no effort given, and not only have you potentially helped destroy the life of a wrong thinker through the mass spreading of an actual hate mob to attack them and probably their friends, families, employers, and schools because you know that is the punishment for face crimes in 2019, so obviously thought crimes deserve just as much, but you also get to pat yourself on the back as .01 cents are added to someone else's share blue account, all from the comfort of your smartphone. Wow, you really are revolutionary, a mover and shaker for change. Please clap. That's why this product is the ultimate expression of egotistical autofellatio. The only way that this concept could be more of an exercise in self-aggrandizing congratulatory behavior is if it included a smartphone-controlled app that extends a tube directly between your butthole and your nose that sucks the toots out of your own rear every time you smash that retweet or report button. Oh, of course. We're a little more progressive and ahead of the curve here in San Francisco. <laughs> 
And this does actually matter, friends, because we are living in an era of deplatforming. Merely implying that someone might be a wrong thinker can get them deplatformed not just from social media, but lose their entire livelihood, such as was the case with this girl, who was recently banned from Twitch, allegedly for merely saying that she believed there were two sexes from a biological perspective, despite being herself supportive of trans people and trans rights. If you want to know why I got banned, this is why I got banned. I was saying on stream that I think biologically there's two genders. I think there's the woman and the man. That's what biology tells us. I specifically said it's okay if a man wants to be a woman and a woman wants to be a man. You cannot be anything in between. I said I supported the transgender community. I never said I didn't. They banned me because I said there's two genders or sexes. That's why I got permanently banned from Twitch. And while I've got my own criticisms of Vic Mignogna for being a prima donna and an egotist, he's been hashtag me too out of a job just because people seemingly decided to dogpile accusations upon him. I mean, making fun of a mass murderer and shaming him will get you removed from existence on YouTube. And for fuck's sake, typing the letter I gets you banned from Twitter. You think there are good intentions in singling out people for any reason other than eliminating them and eliminating ideas that they don't like? That's all this is. It is another method of silencing. And thankfully, it appears to be disappearing into the ether. Although that doesn't mean that the people behind it are disappearing. As I made clear, it doesn't appear that this campaign is directly making any money for Life After Hate via the Twitter thing, since no one's retweeting it anyway. Again, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a victory or a loss for them. Their model doesn't really make any sense. People are likely still donating to the campaign via their pledge function. And given that they only have this one group they're donating to, I'm guessing that they're going to get the money either way. Why that's potentially a problem is because the group involved has a clear political agenda. I'm not supporting or supportive of any kind of extremism, but I looked thoroughly into all of the groups affiliated with Life After Hate and spent a long time looking into what they do, which is really nothing, more or less. Nothing more, at least, than media campaigning to, you know, raise more money. Seriously, it, it's not clear at all what they're supposed to do. And while I have no evidence of any malice on the part of their partners, such as those in the anti-violent extremist network, as I said, they also have a kind of it's not okay to be white emphasis in the things that they've put out to the public over other radical ideologies, such as Islamic extremism. But nor do I see any obvious agenda beyond a general don't be racist bent in their programs of Formers Anonymous, which claims to be an anti-addiction support group, something that I think is just fine and dandy. But I do have a bit of an issue with some of their partners, and specifically with the general vagueness of what life after hate is supposed to do to, you know, end hate. But really the biggest red flag for me was their affiliation with the Strong Cities Network. Strong Cities Network is a global anti-terrorist law enforcement initiative put forward by Loretta Lynch in 2015 that is affiliated with the United Nations. The point of this network is such that if an affiliated city's local law enforcement is deemed to be not meeting the standards of anti-extremists or extremism, a global force can thereby step in and override local law enforcement with their own anti-terrorist, anti-extremist initiatives. They specify that they do not target Islamic extremism alone, but rather all forms of extremism, emphasizing in their own FAQ that this includes right-wing extremism or right-wing political ideology. I'm not saying there's absolutely no types of right-wing extremism or violence at all, but proportionally, you're measuring Charlottesville, itself a bit dubious given a communist professor was waving his gun around before Heather Heyer was unfortunately killed, versus the Ariana Grande concert and saying both are of equal concern to your organization. The real fear that I and others have expressed about this initiative is that this is a global police force which supersedes local law enforcement. To give you a better idea as to why I'm concerned with that group, the DOJ said in their press release regarding its foundation that, quote, while many cities and local authorities are developing innovative responses to address this challenge, no systematic efforts are in place to share experiences, pull resources, and build a community of cities to inspire local action on a global scale. This is the definition of a globalist program. And while obviously there have been no global police takeovers since the program was enacted, but it is still around, and it does mean that certain cities could defer to the UN to take over for the local police. And we are seeing them here affiliated and associated with a specifically anti-right-wing extremist group, Life After Hate. Do you think, therefore, they're going to be more concerned with actual violent jihadis or with Identity Europa putting up some flyers? 
I'm just raising the question, I don't have an answer. I also reached out to Exit USA, which is a subsidiary program of Life After Hate, and claims to support people and their friends or family escaping white supremacy in an email. I wrote a short autobiography about myself from the perspective of a friend trying to help me, the horrible Aiden Paladin, stop being such an awful, terrible extremist. The message describes the fact that this woman is a Trump supporter who wants to build the wall, thinks it's okay to be white, and believes in several conservative ideas, like being pro-life and being against feminism. Please help her, Exit USA. You're her only hope. I asked about what their program could do to help her, and here's the response. Can you guys see why I don't really trust these people, or at least why I'm a bit dubious about this whole thing? I don't even think it necessarily has to involve counter hate, because it seems as if the program is quickly being erased and forgotten. As with most forms of slacktivism, it generates a lot of attention very quickly and then fades into the dust, similarly to lots of crowdfunding campaigns. Except in this case, you're not even expecting any kind of outcome. You're not expecting a product, you're not expecting an end user result. Just a positive feeling for believing that you did something. I could be wrong, absolutely, this could end up sticking around for some time, but I anticipate, given its nature and its backing, that it's just been already a successful scam and it will fade away. It already has been successful, as I said. Most of the buzz about this happened back in mid-2018. Whether or not it will ever become anything more than an idea that gets sadly dropped, or whether or not they keep kind of pretending that the intern running their Twitter account is actually an AI. I'm sure they'll stick around long enough to rake in every last shekel from the well-intentioned fart sniffers. And again, not like it really matters if they do build it because they've already claimed to be a success. They don't have to build their AI because this is not about getting anything done. It's about feeling good about yourself for having contributed. But the organizations behind this are not going to go away. And that's really the scarier thing. But I also bring this all up because the entire idea of an artificial intelligence censoring Twitter is not new and is likely only to get worse over time, not only on that one social media platform, but across all of them. We see this getting worse and worse seemingly every day. All this program or plan really was was to start a hashtag that got people donating and therefore got people feeling good about themselves for hashtag countering hate. And why does this matter, Aiden? Because clearly, based on the outrage and backlash we've seen with Omar's tweet being perceived and depicted so radically different from people, often on the same political side of the aisle, is evidence not only of the undeniable importance of social media upon modern politics, but of the Orwellian trend in silencing based on vague claims of dog whistling or coded language, which demonstrably is aimed at conservatives, at least most of the time. After all, why else would you ban someone for typing the letter I? Seems like old Jackie was having a little bit of a racist thought there, huh? Counter hate was just another way to target a specific political leaning while ignoring anything tasteless said by their own allies. And what do I mean by demonstrable? Well, setting now from this Quillette article by Richard Hanania, looking at a number of Twitter suspensions of prominent figures on the website, found that since 2015, 21 of the 22 suspended people on Twitter were Trump supporters, indicating conservatives are four times more likely than Hillary supporters to be banned from the platform. What is the purpose of a movement like counter hate? Is it just to raise money? Yes, obviously, although I still can't figure out what they're doing with that money, as half of the groups don't really say anything beyond raising awareness or starting media campaigns. But as with any organization, a sizable chunk of it's going to go to the leaders and organizers. I do think it's more than just raising money, though. It's about attacking wrong thinkers, people with bad opinions, or what are deemed as bad opinions, to be clear. Counter Hate specifically doesn't want those messages tweeted out. That's why they had this really bizarre and backwards plan of retweet and our anti-hate group gets a dollar that they were going to get anyway, of course. What they're really hoping is not for people to not retweet it, but for people to report the Twitter account. And by the way, Counter Hate, if your premise is one of censorship and that's what you think should exist online, then fine. But there is an obvious political leaning here. If this was applied equilaterally, I would say at least you're internally consistent, but they're not. In going through all of the posts that they've countered, I didn't find a single one that leaned to the left. Do you think that Counter Hate would have responded to a tweet from Sarah Jong about how much she hates white people? No, and I showed you that propensity in their political leanings from their own account. I won't say it's a scam out and out, although I do think it is, and many people may wholeheartedly believe that this is a good thing, but to me, it seems disingenuous as hell, evident by everything from the structure of the retweet donation system, to the lack of any type of actual bot or AI after over a year of fundraising, to the self-congratulatory nature of seemingly everyone involved. So here's my counter to counter hate. 
While I doubt we'll ever see a delicious meltdown on the level of the chocolatey lava cake that was Bully Hunters, and they're likely going to get away with this as it fades into obscurity, despite failing to ever finish their bold new AI for some reason or another after all the money they've surely pulled in. As is true, once again, of most crowdfunding projects, I'm going to be following the campaign and see where it goes either way. Because the proposal itself is not only one of the funniest things I've read in a while, but also one of the most horrifying, and likely something that someone really is working on. While this might have been a scam, I'm sure that Twitter or somebody else out there, maybe one of the old candid developers, are working on a way to find hate, but only hate as it applies to wrong thinkers. So be on the lookout for other similar programs to pop up in the future, and I hope I've helped shed some light on this idea of we counter hate and explain why it is that you cannot build an artificial intelligence that accurately defines dog whistling and coded language when we ourselves are seemingly so incapable of doing so. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Aiden Paladin, Altana Volt. Why don't you just leave me alone? If you're gonna call me a homo, then... I don't know what... I don't know what to say. If you're gonna call me a homo, then... Then, back off! A lot of you people are making edited versions of my videos and copying and pasting my videos, and I will not have it! Got it.